So this is the sea trial of the Seawind 1260. We are super excited about this. For those of you who haven't already seen our 1260 review, the 1260 is a pint-sized version of our favorite, the 1600. Now, what are we going to think of this as we take her out for the day and the night to see how she performs? So on this beautiful autumn day on the Chesapeake Bay, we drop our lines and head out onto open water. After the crazy nature of the boat show, this is such a tonic. It's also pretty nice to be crew for a change. I love the fact that I'm just handling lines and fenders and that all the heavy work is being done by other people. And so with Annapolis fading into the distance and open water in front of us, it's time to really sit back and enjoy this test sail of the Seawind 1260. The 1260 that we were test sailing had the standard 29 horsepower Yanmar engines. These pushed us along effortlessly at six knots. That's the advantage of a light displacement boat. Underway, it is clear that these side decks are wide and airy and the trifold door, when raised, gives a really good space to use for both sailing and for living. It is fair to say that in five years of sailing the world, it is very rare that we get conditions so settled, calm and warm all at the same time. Therese therefore used her best judgment to test the foredeck area and the seating area aft of the trampolines. Pretty good way of spending an hour on the foredeck. So let's see what her initial thoughts are about the 1260. So Nick is on the helm. I don't know if you can see him just behind me, around there somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I cannot tell you how good it is to be back out on the water. We've been at the Annapolis Boat Show for five days and it has been hectic. And to get out on the water on such a beautiful afternoon in such a gorgeous location, I mean, it is so picturesque, it is so lovely. Uh, it's just heaven. We don't have the sails up, we're motoring directly into the wind and we're still doing six knots. So, it, and the wind's not that strong. I think that it's about, I don't know, probably five knots true wind. Um, so it's pretty light, but still, six knots motoring into it, not bad. And finally, after motoring away from Annapolis, we're able to get the <laughs> engines off and finally get the sails up and see what this boat will do. One of the first things I noticed about the Seawind 1260 was how light and responsive the helm was. In our recent charter in Thailand, we found the helm on a hydraulic steering system of the boat we had there to be very unresponsive. This was super light and you can actually feel the boat. So the criticism that is sometimes leveled at catamarans that you don't have the connection with the boat that you should have, completely unfounded. Nick just stuck his head up in the window <laughs> and I thought it was something in the water I was going to hit. <laughs> Scared the pants off me. <laughs> just Nick. <laughs> I think he's pretending to work while also having a lie down. Is this your way of working? Huh? Is this how you're working? <laughs> So here we are on the foredeck of this Seawind 1260 and I think I overused the word lovely, but <laughs> this is truly lovely. Very different to what we normally do, there's no like waves breaking over the deck, there's no engine on and we are doing two knots of boat speed and three knots of wind, so it's mm. a very, very, very light day. What I would say about this boat is that realistically you only need a puff of breeze to get her to move, she's light and as Therese said, 
all the systems on this boat are refreshingly simple. Mm. From a sailor's point of view, we see we've seen so many boats that are super complicated. They're run by all sorts of like mad sorcerers that live in the bilges and electronics. And this is just it's simple. And Everything. it's very practical. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually the more time I spend on this boat, the more taken I am with it. I really do like it. Mm. I think that it's also considerably cheaper than other boats of this size. So I, I don't know. I. I don't know, I like the simplistic design. There are some things I think, well, you know what, maybe they, you know, they could you know, make it a little bit fancier inside. But the simplicity of it and the amount of space you get is insane. Yeah. It is an insane amount of space in that indoor-outdoor thing. I think it's only really been done on the barley. Yeah. And I don't like the barley because it's not really a sailor's boat. No. This has the indoor-outdoor space and it's a sailor's boat. Mm. And those are things that we want. And I think, as I said to you yesterday, if you were to put a cockpit tent on this, mm. either with screens for, to keep the rain out or to keep mosquitoes out, and you'd have, you'd have an amazing living area. Well, it's just a very uh, clever use of space. Yeah. And it goes to show that a 40, I think it's 41 foot? 41 it's 12 meters 60, whatever yeah. that is. Um, a 41 foot catamaran, I mean, should be spacious enough anyway, but you can create even an even greater sense yeah. of space just by using a clever design feature like the, that trifold door. So, I really like it. Excellent. Well, let's get some more sailing done. And if you're interested in the full review of the Seawind 1260, there's a little click box up there. That's a 30 minute review, including all the pluses and the minuses about this 41 foot world cruising catamaran. everybody as you can see we are having morning coffee with Shane Grover who is the international marketing manager for Seawind Catamarans now we have had some amazing questions put to him uh, by our patrons and by putting a, a question on Facebook what do you want to ask Seawind so in no particular order these are the questions so thanks Shane for doing this for us um, some hard questions here we go. So question one um, is to do with slamming. Yep. Now, when it comes to catamarans, people are always asking us, why are you not measuring bridge deck clearance? Why, you know, bridge deck clearance is always a problem. Um, you know, what is the height of this? Tell us in your own words how sea winds, and especially this 1260, reduce slamming. Okay, so on the 1260, you start with a 850 millimeter wing deck clearance, yep. which is pretty good for a boat of this size. Yep. But what we also do is we, in the midships area, we have a nacelle. It actually looks like a, a bit of a jet ski yep. under the middle of the boat. This is where we store our water tanks and we get the weight very low. Yep. <clears throat> that also breaks up the wave pressure. So when a wave is hitting the, the, the wing deck, it does hit it earlier yep. because it's lower, but it breaks that pressure up. So you're not getting a big flat slamming. You're getting a much reduced pressure yep. impact on the wing deck, which really cuts out that, that, that heavy banging yep. when you're underway. Fantastic. And I take it you, this is all designed using like mo computer modeling and uh, fluid dynamics and things. Absolutely. I think that's really important because we've seen um, the way the catamaran design has evolved over the last 40 years where there's, they started, you know, after the Warren Cats and then you get people building catamarans in garages. 
And now that you're involving computer modeling and the fluid dynamics of how, you know, yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so uh, what you would say is that you have far less slamming because of the shape of the cell rather than other things. Absolutely, yeah. I'd also say that, that we don't throw away practical um, evaluation of the model as yep. well. Just, just We do also run uh, computer calculations, but we also look at our models underway and we make modifications after we've released a prototype and we, we do also apply you know, real life experience to the design. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, next question is from Tim and Tim says, um, this boat is designed to be lightweight, but every single panel on this boat is, every single uh, you know, clear panel is made of glass. So, and, and, and it's it's surprising, even the roof panels that they're looking at the sails and the shower screens are glass. Um, so how does that work with your ethos of making a light fast boat? So we do, uh, obviously weight is important for performance, weight is important to not overload things. Yep. But we don't go crazy with it. We, we you know, For us, quality is more important than yep. weight. Okay. Um, and the glass being, uh, we couldn't do a boat like this with, with Lexan or yeah, Plexiglass. Yeah. We just, you look at a three, four year old boat and yep. the, the glass is scratched, or the, sorry, the Lexan is scratched, it's, it's crazed. Yep. Um, whereas glass, we can have, we've got 15 year old boats that look as good as this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, another one from another Shane of all things. Um, question is about loading ability. A light boat, uh, 41 foot six, um, and this is is billed as the you know the boat that will take you you know comfortably around the world. Yep. Um, what can you realistically load this boat with in a, once you put the fuel and the water on before you start to lose performance? We recommend keeping the uh, the loading under 2,500 kilos. Okay. Anything, which is a lot, and anything up to that, the boat will still sail beautifully. It carries the load quite well. Yep. Um, we haven't really had anybody else had to overload, have had overloaded at all 60 to yep. the point of um, yeah, noticing a significant loss of performance. Perfect. And the last question is, um, what else do you do to make this boat so light? So obviously we've seen a lot of things with. Um, you know, uh, most catamaran manufacturers now put these the, the foam cord panels in the woodwork, but are you doing anything that, you know, you feel is innovative and worth mentioning? Yeah, I think we're, uh, one of the unique aspects of our build is a lot of the furniture is composite. Yep. So there, there is a minimal amount of, of, of dense wood yep. in the build, and there is no plywood. We've absolutely eliminated all plywood from our boats. So all the uh, the panels, dividers, shelving that you see in your cupboards, yep. that's all foam core laminated panels, yep. so fiberglass panels that are glass into the hulls. So they're also adding extra reinforcement, yep. there's no rot, and they're getting a mechanical and a chemical bond to the hull. So they're yep. really forming part of the whole structure. Yep. One of the reasons that the boat doesn't twist and creak and groan. And obviously all those panels are much lighter than plywood as well. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the creaks and groans are something that we have noticed. And I've said this before to lots of people, like, oh, we want to go and buy catamaran. And it's a, it's a criticism that is leveled at us with some a justifiable criticism in that we are reviewing catamarans on the dock and it's test sailing them that really reveal things like creaks and squeaks uh, and modular furniture where the, you know, the, the molds of the furniture actually built into the fiberglass mold as it comes out of the factory mean that you guess there's less moving parts, there's less, you know, and that is going to reduce uh, squeak so yeah pretty fantastic so any basically um, anything else that you want to kind of put forward while we've got like a captive audience about the 1260 or seawind itself as a company yeah so you'll notice on uh, a common trend on all our models our forward windscreens are quite sloped yeah in comparison to a lot of other catamarans in the market yep. they have very vertical windscreens that really is an indicator of what this boat is designed for this yep. boat is designed to go through any conditions yep. so you can imagine taking on three meter swells yep. over the bows and they're just going to get blown straight over the back of this boat. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and to tell you the truth, yeah, I, I, we have seen a lot of catamarans now because it's what we're looking for. I have, I, the only catamaran that I've seen with bigger opening windows is the Katana 53, which is probably twice as big as this boat. And Teresa's, you know, she's always talking about ventilation. That, those are absolutely crazy, amazing. Yeah, and the visibility from that position, which does double as a nav station, you know, gives you fantastic visibility of the sails from inside. Brilliant, okay, well listen, uh, Shane, it's been an absolute pleasure, sir. Um, we're gonna get back to our coffee, and I think that Richard is making us breakfast, so we're gonna ask him some difficult questions over bacon. <laughs> So breakfast with Richard and Kerry Ward. There's an amazing smell of bacon coming up from that galley. And Richard and Kerry have run the company for many years. Let's go and ask them about their philosophy. 
So uh, another thing that we've been asked about is is how uh, Seawind support their customers, which I believe is actually slightly different to a lot of other companies. So talking to Shane before, um, Seawind, uh, you know, the, the, the company get involved at the stage of the world. You're not dealing with a dealer. You may buy through a dealer, but Seawind get involved um, and help you themselves in, in specifying the boat. And if there's ever, if there's ever, if there is if there is ever a warranty problem, they will then, you know, that you deal with them directly. Is that something that you find difficult to do, to continually have to, you know, uh, be available for all your customers as, you know, as a central organization rather than outsourcing to your dealers to fix potential problems or deal with builds? No, not really. Um, the, I, I, I like that aspect of it. Yep. And um, the, the danger, of course, is as you get bigger and bigger, whether you can sustain that. Yep. But um, the, First off, we do run the company very much as a as a um, a personal type company. Yep. Uh, p people who buy a Seawind do become part of the Seawind family, mm -hmm. and as best we possibly can, we try to get to know them. And we get to know them. You know, obviously that's not possible if it's sold through dealers um, to get to personally know everybody. Yep. But at boat shows, we do get to know them, and um, <clears throat> and as you say, we we take responsibility for the for the um, uh, for any warranty issues uh, and they're handled directly from the factory yeah uh, we might in in certain times we'll go through the dealers mm -hmm. but more as a facilitator rather than okay. uh, than actually somebody who's the front line of that and um, that seems to work well and and through that we develop a relationship with with owners um, uh, obviously we hope that that doesn't become a big job, and no. uh, the, the way to make sure it doesn't become a, a big job is to make sure we don't have much warranty. Yeah, well, absolutely. Listen, it, for me, it's hugely comforting that we have owned three boats now, and two of them from new, and having having support for the warranty is actually it it, it, it is very very important and. As one of my best friends is a shipwright, and he says that to build a boat, you know, there's about half a million moving parts, and it is impossible to not have things that need to be repaired and fixed or, or modified. Uh, and being able to, being aware that when you do have these minor problems or even sometimes major problems, you are not um, then having to fight a dealer or the or, or the actual manufacturer to get things fixed. So, yeah, that that to me is actually a really big selling point. After a delicious cooked breakfast, we started to make the journey back to Annapolis. However, the weather decided not to cooperate this time, but actually this was a bit of a blessing in disguise because we got a chance to see exactly how the 1260 would be like in poor visibility and rainy weather. So this for us is uh, a novelty. Um, complete 360 visibility and being outside and not being wet and being warm. So this is, uh, yeah, I think it's the way sailing works. Like we came out for a test sail yesterday and there was no wind. And today there's like, it's, it's like showers. And uh, for those of you who have watched our channel for a while, you kind of may know how much I hate the cold. Uh, but this, uh, uh, Shane put the clears up. So that there's that literally, what, you know, we don't have the full cockpit tent up, but there is, uh, I'm completely dry. Uh, and hence able to, you know, safely steer, um, and how using uh, wearing just my old old man's cardigan. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty impressive. I don't think I've only got to move my head a couple of inches, and I've got full 360 visibility. It's it is pretty impressive. Um, and yeah, this yeah this whole thing it, it works really well. And as I said, the visibility is not good today. We've got grey on grey, and we've also got a lot of rain on the glass. So from the point of view of you know actually doing a proper test, this is exactly what we want. As useful as the rainy weather was in terms of seeing how this boat performed in poor visibility and rainy conditions, we were glad to see the sun make a reappearance on our way back to Annapolis. Huge thanks to Richard, Kerry and Shane for taking us out overnight on this fantastic boat. We really enjoyed our time on the Seawind 1260. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel, of course, hit that notification bell, and we will see you next week with a brand new episode. Thanks for watching.